This is Valley News Live at 10. I thought a bomb went off. I mean, the shrapnel everywhere, uh, houses gone. We've been waiting all day for the National Weather Service to officially designate the storm that man was referring to as a tornado tonight. They have. It's an EF2. It happened just south of Alexandria. The National Weather Service says winds topped 120 miles an hour. Yeah, at least 75 structures were either totaled or severely damaged. At one point, down power lines and trees blocked all the roads leading into town, so residents were essentially trapped there. Meanwhile, about an hour north of there, in the town of Battle Lake, Minnesota, they are also beginning the cleanup process. Process. Valley News Team's Shay Taylor gives us a look at what folks they are going through. I'm going to get tears just thinking about it. You never think it's going to happen to you. Husband and wife Gerald Holo and Jerry Wilmore have lived in their home for the last 20 years. But now the home they raised their family in looks a bit different. We've got two trees here that were on the roof. The powerful winds during Monday night's storm were strong enough to uproot several more trees across the family's property. It was loud. It, it's like they say, like a loud train. And nothing was safe, including a few vehicles parked in the driveway. We heard that roar and we hit the basement. Wilmore says the storm rolled through in less than 10 minutes, but it was enough to cause havoc. And look at the mess we have to clean up. <laughs> Overwhelming. The couple says in the last two decades they've lived there. This is the first time they've seen this kind of damage. This is the bad part, the hole in the roof. The storm also knocked down power lines, leaving the family without electricity and water. But while the damages can be fixed, loved ones are irreplaceable. And the pair says they are happy their family was not harmed, but they advise others to remember to always take caution. I am telling you, when you are told that there's a storm coming, you don't stand at the window and watch. You take the warning serious. In Battle Lake, Nishe Taylor, Valley News Live. Now the residents there tell us several power lines are down across that town as well, and it's unclear when power will be restored. We're also getting a better look at some of the damage in Elbow Lake, where buildings were damaged, some even collapsed. Campers at one campground huddled together into a tornado shelter, while countless trees were ripped from the ground. Every tree as you come in is just, it was down. We had probably 20 trees just in there, and they all fell down. So, yeah, it was not a good situation. Right, and for the week ahead, looks quite a bit calmer. First Alert Storm Team meteorologist Nathan Hopper joins us now with details. Nathan. Yeah, thanks, Justin. You're exactly right. Much calmer weather on the menu here for the next seven days. But of course, looking back, seeing the damage there, the videos, the wild scenes from those storms, most of the wind damage and hailstones came in a kind of a little channel from, say, Watertown up through the Bemidji area and up into the Arrowhead of Minnesota. Let's take this full screen so folks can get a better idea of uh, what I'm talking about here, where you see those tree branches kind of bent over and those little wispy things. Those are those wind reports and those tree damage reports, mostly in our far southern and eastern neighborhoods through Lakes Country, up through uh, southern Beltrami County is where we saw that track of that storm really roll through. Those reds you see there, those are uh, tornado reports, mostly out of our viewing area right now. I think the Weather Service working on getting some uh, surveys done across Lakes Country to see uh, what type of storm caused the damage there. Most of the reports we've got in the past 48 hours have been across uh, our North Dakota counties in just the form of rain, some heavy rain. But here's how much rain fell. Carrington, the winter, 4.5 inches of rain fell in that area. I heard a lot of uh, reports of flooding, basements flooding from that rain yesterday. 3.8 there in Aberdeen, but look at Wheaton, 2.9 inches. Detroit Lakes, 2.8. Minnewaukee, 2.6. And Fergus Falls there, 2.3 inches. So yeah, it was a wet one, and now we've got some plenty of time to dry out. Skies mainly clear at this point. Beautiful sunset out there this evening, but of course, Justin Stacy will break down just how long the quiet weather hangs around here in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Nathan. Continuing coverage after a mother and a baby were shot at a popular Fargo Mexican restaurant. 21 year old Lucia Garcia is still dealing with significant brain damage due to a lack of oxygen after being gunned down inside Plaza Azteca 
two weeks ago, along with her seven month old son, Dominique. Baby Dominique is expected to make a full recovery. The gunman, 24 year old Malik Gill, led authorities on a high speed chase in Clay County. He crashed and later shot himself. A fundraiser for Lucia now planned to take place at St. Henry's Catholic Church in Purim on Sunday, June 12th from 11 to 1. There will be Mexican food, a bake sale and other opportunities to donate. Continuing coverage tonight out of Wadena, where a massive fire that prompted the whole city to shelter in place rekindled. Crews spent two hours at Minnesota Valley Irrigation putting out hot spots. Today, a sand dike was also constructed to contain the chemicals in that building. Still no word on the cause of the fire. We now know the name of a man found dead outside of an apartment building in Grand Forks Sunday. Police say 27 year old Daniel Singer was found unresponsive outside the building in the 1100 block of 25th Avenue South. Police say there is no obvious sign of trauma, but the investigation is ongoing. This is the second dead body found in Grand Forks in the past week. New for you tonight. Check out this video it was just shared by Fargo police. They tell us it's from last Friday. FPD worked with the North Dakota Highway Patrol, the Cass County Sheriff's Office and West Fargo Police in an effort to track street racing from the sky. They use this airplane with a camera capable of tracking the movements of people who are driving recklessly. They say this has been a problem all around town, but especially in the area of 52nd Avenue South and South Fargo. In addition to more patrols from the streets and the air, police say they plan to follow up with more people who they've identified as street racing suspects. New information tonight on the Minnesota mother, 28 year old Jalissa Thaller, charged with murdering her own six year old son, putting him in the trunk of her car. A search warrant application offering some insight into just what happened the night of May 19th when she was arrested. Detectives detail how officers pulled her over for driving without a tire. When police approached, they say she had blood on her hands, which she told them was from a tampon. She later changed her story, said it was from deer meat she just bought. The warrant states she refused to sit in the back of the squad car, so she was taken back to her apartment. Shortly after, police opened the trunk, found the boy, and went back to her apartment. By then, she had left, but she was found nearby. We're learning more as well about what led to gunshots in downtown Fargo over the weekend that left two men injured. Police say that happened just after 1 a.m. Sunday near the VFW downtown. 21 year old Angel Millet is charged in Cass County District Court with two felony counts of aggravated assault, reckless endangerment and discharging a firearm within the city limits. Millet turned himself in to police uh, who located a handgun in his apartment. Documents state when Millette was interviewed by detectives, he said he started shooting to scare off two men who attacked him. Police say Millette fired 16 rounds in the direction of that group. 29-year-old Antonio Lopez and a 16-year-old boy were hit and taken to the hospital for injuries. If convicted, Millette faces up to five years in prison. A child fell out of a fourth floor window yesterday afternoon in North Fargo. First responders were called just after two to the U32 apartments where the child had fallen from a window after pushing out a screen. Officials say the child landed on a second floor patio and is expected to recover. Tomorrow is the last day in office for North Dakota's longest serving state senator, Ray Holmberg. This comes after the senator was found to have traded more than 70 text messages with a man in jail on child porn charges. According to a police report, a Grand Forks police detective and two Homeland Security special agents searched Holmberg's home back in November, seizing CV CDs and DVDs. We still know what was on them. Holmberg is being represented by attorney Mark Fries, who says he has not seen the search warrant and he had difficulty getting information from state and federal authorities on why his client is even being investigated. Tonight, Fargo City leaders announced Roars Construction has lost a $1.4 million incentive for the Newman Center project ne next to North Dakota State University due to unfinished development. The two sides met in a closed door session this afternoon. The city claims Jim Roars broke agreements by failing to construct townhomes in the development. That's included St. Paul's Newman Center and apartments along North University Drive. The project was supposed to be done five months ago by the end of December. Roars had earlier asked for more time claiming outside factors prompted construction delays. New developments on a voting issue in Fargo. Fargo leaders have decided to keep a measure on term limits for commissioners on the June ballot. 
City Auditor Steve Sprague said the board discovered wording errors or typos on the ballot and considered moving it to November instead. Tonight, the commission decided to keep that issue on the June 14th ballot. Also going on right now tonight is the illumination ceremony at the Spirit of the Sandbagger Archway in downtown Fargo, which just moments ago lit up. This is on 2nd Street and 1st Avenue North. The Spirit of the Sandbagger honors the thousands of people over the years who have worked to hold back major floods. There were speeches tonight and obviously some very pretty lights now downtown.